Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and today, finally, we are properly in Zootessia Zoo! Huzzah! Huzzah! Hooray! Oh my goodness, we're here. <laughs> We are here and we are at the entrance of Zudesia Zoo, which I have to say, now that we have reached season six, I am looking around with clear eyes in, and I think there's actually uh, quite a bit, quite a bit we could do to spruce up the entrance, the proper beginning of our zoo. Like what if we managed to have some lovely holes in the tree back there where some very pretty birds could be staring out of? Or what if we managed to sprinkle a bunch of beautiful flowers around the place? And why did I leave nothing but bunnies as the guides to our entire zoo. People will have questions, questions that will need answered. Uh, but we're going to take that all in and come up with some ideas while we wander the zoo on our grand zoo tour, which we have not done in so long, Lily. So we're going to begin at the beginning at the uh, entrance of Zudesia Zoo, and then we're just going to kind of see where our steps take us from there. We'll probably go over, uh, which direction is that, Lily girl? That's going to be to the east first, and then we'll wander over to the west, which happened to make up most of our zoo, Lily. And then maybe we'll even throw in a trip to the Meadow of Horses, just as a little bonus by the end. But as you can see, the uh, tour begins by admiring this absolutely gorgeous sign that we had over here and I have to I have to wonder Lily how fun would it be to string up a bunch of fairy lights over here and to make sure that we had like a few animals over here or Lily what if we had some beautiful divincing pieces like little murals on the walls divincing pieces of the little animals we we have here or what if we had like little promotional posters of new exhibits <gasps> that would be so fun Lily little promotional areas to celebrate what new exhibits we have built in the zoo oh, all of the ideas are starting to pour off of me but today is not an idea tour it is a tour tour Lily. All right, so let's get started. I know a lot of you guys have probably seen much of the zoo before, but many of you have probably never seen the zoo in its entirety. So I figured it would be very important to show you what we have actually gotten done already before we move on to what we can do, to the dreams that we have for our zoo. So, ha, huh, yeah, um, I suppose the entrance is a little bit underwhelming at first, but in my defense, we do have some really cool sections over here. Riona and Golomaro are watching over all of the interactive bird tree where we have a whole bunch of parrots who will actually talk to you and you can come over here and help to feed them. You can actually bring over different bits of fruit and get some zookeeper experience points. Don't mind that. I just have to fix the texture, uh, the little texture override for this. But you can come and get zookeeper experience points uh, in trade for fruit that then our talented zookeepers and animal trainers will use on Bindi, Scarlet, and Irwin in order to teach them how to safely interact with the public. And they're pretty fun. Hi, Bindi. Hi. Little soft whistle. Little cluck, cluck, cluck for me. <laughs> how are they doing today? Different macaw species live in pairs, family groups, or flocks of up to 30 birds. Oh, I love the animal facts. Oh, no, I can't see this animal fact. Rihanna, I'm going to have to get you. I'm going to have to get you out from under the tree. Oh, my goodness. Uh, or here, let's do this so I can actually see what she has to say to us. All right, there we go. And careful. Macaw beaks are so strong they can crush nuts with no problem. Or your fingers. And yep, different macaw species. Most macaws nest in holes in trees or in earthen, uh, earthen banks and sides of cliffs. Ah, I love the animal facts. And it's kind of empty over here, but oh, and we should put up our little proper signs. That would be really fun too. It's kind of empty right over here, but I wanted something fun and animal related to be one of the first things that you could see after you got out of our, our little zoo entrance zone. But it'd be nice to have a few guests wandering around so they could let us know what they think about having all of these birds here. Right, Lily? And then down here is a statue that unfortunately got broken. <laughs> when we we had to have the great cleaning so I need to fix this statue that's definitely on my list Lily uh, but this is supposed to be a peafowl family to represent our beautiful peafowl gardens that we have over there past the Jade Bridge which we'll visit later Lily and we've also got a another little garden right down here I love how we packed everything in I need to start thinking, what could we add? What could we make so that the zoo felt nice and tight, like you could pop around all the different corners and find a new discovery? 
but we have a little garden over here and this garden is actually made up of some of the trees that people used to be able to plant in our zoo and I think I might start that up again pretty soon because it was really really wonderful and a way where people could permanently leave their mark on this world that's why I'm so defensive of this world and I do not plan on budging from it ah rain again <laughs> But that is why I'm so defensive of the world and don't plan on leaving it like ever because I want to be able to stay here Ah, Okay, the rain is not heavy enough to justify sleeping through it I want to stay here with all of the trees that people put down like this gentle flowering oak tree that was planted by Holly I I really love it. It's so beautiful And it was something that she requested just as a way to remember some of the gentle things of the world And I love these gardens again. It'd be even better with people who could stroll along them Maybe tell us a little bit about why they love them the sweet bites cherry tree planted by Tasman so long ago It's still fun to see Tasman pop around and then the playful blossom cherry tree planted by Ethan oh, And Ethan now that was a zoo crafter like extraordinaire and then I wonder what I could put over here. It'd be kind of fun to have like a little exhibit for something or ooh, maybe a little gazebo to just watch the waterfall. Maybe we could do some bird watching. <gasps> we should find some birds that could come and live in my river. That would be so much fun, like our ducks. In fact, we do have a duck exhibit. Here, I will guide you guys over this away. And we shall now begin touring to the west part, or the east part, I should say, of the zoo. Which, right now, is just a bunch of signs and promises. Oh my. <laughs> but we do have another garden over here. Oh, I love having all these gardens. I need to make it so you guys can get the gardens in the world again. This is the marigold garden planted by Tyler from so long ago, who sent in some marigold seeds to the P.O. box. And I, I just, I love marigolds. I planted them that year and had a glorious harvest in the August in my little planter pot. But this garden is planted to always remember her as well. Again, you can see why I'm super defensive about not leaving this place. And then over here, instead of a small butterfly house, like I used to think, and instead of, oh, the hidden items hunt might be really fun. Like a little treasure hunt that people could go on while they wander the zoo. But instead of having uh, like a small shop, I think, Lily, what we should do is we should actually set up a spot where people can come and get free maps of the zoo. They can come and they can pick up some empty maps, which I want to make myself because I think those would be pretty easy to do. Just a compass. Yeah, we could pull that off no problem but like a little kiosk that we could set up over here and people could come and get a little map and then they could use the map to explore this area i think that'd be really really fun and we have our little dodo uh atm and exchange where people can come over and exchange any of the money that they might need or the zookeeper experience that they may have earned so anywhere there's a spot where people can spend money or like make money maybe they should be able to spend their money too so maybe we'll set up like a little tiny Zudesia, um, little tiny Zudesia gift shop, like a small one, just to sort of wet your whistle, Lily. Oh, like maybe it could sell some Zudesia backpacks. So yeah, that'd be really cute actually, if we made a whole bunch of backpacks, and we made it so you could like get these lime backpacks, and they were named like a uh, Zudesia swag pack, and you could put all of your Zudesia swag in it. I love that idea. That would be really fun too. Nice little kiosks, nice little map spots. Why does it always rain in this world? Oh my gosh. And then down here, once upon a time, I was thinking about like having a little mini hidden cave exhibit. Oh gosh. Oh, and this leads to the ducks actually. And maybe we won't do a hidden cave exhibit, but this would be a really fun way just to let people walk down and find a second place where they could reach the duck exhibit because there is nothing better than a place that feels like it's full of mystery and adventure, in my opinion. Oh, where everywhere you turn, there might be another hidden passageway, and you'll want to follow it and see where it leads you. And let's see. Yeah, so let's wiggle this way. And the ducks! The ducks! And my attempt at figuring out if a mushroom garden would grow underground. And it didn't really go over very successfully, so I'll probably do something else with that. But this is the duck exhibit! And let's see, I think I have a bed over here. I sure do. Oh gosh. Lily, you might want to come in, but I really think uh, maybe just a normal torch or two. Yeah, just a normal normal torch we'll do in here. Oh my goodness. You're supposed to be working, you silly, you silly thing. All right, let's see. This is actually a mushroom, and I guess it's light ran out or something. 
Oh, thank goodness. I can sleep through the rain in the night now. <laughs> this is one of our hidden zookeeper ranger stations. So this is the Duck Lakeside Ranger Station. And it is actually tucked hidden away in the rock and sometimes by vines where you don't know where it would be. But I think since this is like literally right next to my entrance, I probably should have some nice staircases. The tunnel system leads under the main entrance to the zoo somewhere around here. Yeah, this is this right over here is actually the main entrance to the zoo. So maybe we need to have like a nice big foyer where people can come down and sit and maybe talk, maybe have a few trades people down here. And I was also thinking of using tree roots as a rail system that could kind of go like a subway system all over our zoo lily. So it would stretch from basically right below the entrance. So if you didn't want to take the teleporter and you wanted something more scenic, then you could ride on top of a whole bunch of tree roots that would have the rail system put on top of them. Oh my goodness. It feels so surreal to think about like all of those old adventures and then sure enough if you follow the cave system this way You will actually find a few more places where you can pop out and like wander along the riverside And some of this is kind of dangerous with gigantic holes in it Maybe this will be like one of the first spots that we start working in once we actually get back to working on the zoo Also lovely butterflies. I highly approve of a world where butterflies just flitter under our feet. Come on Lily We'll stop for food in just a second all right, but this is our duck exhibit. Huzzah, look how cute it is. Look at all the eggs. Let's go get some of those eggs. Hello, everybody. Hello, one day I will hatch all of your eggs again, I promise. Oh my goodness, look at all of you. Oh, duckus, it's been so long. Emma, oh, Princess Quacks, Feather, Windy. Oh my goodness, we've got a lot of ducks in here. A couple different duck species too. So I think it'd actually be fine if we had some of those ducks just in our riverway. But this is the common mallard exhibit where we have a whole bunch of the common ducks of the area. Um, let me see. I need to actually wiggle over here. Man, building that was really fun too. I'm going to leave this here and I should probably leave the eggs. Oh, and these are all of the names. Yes. Quackity, Pip, Lotus, Roger, Anita, Puddle, Zuri, Georgie, Dumpling. These are all the names that you guys actually came up with for the ducks. I totally forgot about that. Uh, oh dear. All right, Willow Sapling, you stay there. I was after these eggs. And I think we will actually hatch the duck eggs. And we will give them a chance to just go ahead and have excess ducks live over in the river next to my home. Because that would be really fun. All right, so man, I'm already really pumped to start working over here, but we've got a tour to do, Lily. So let's carry on. All right, careful there, Princess Quack. Uh, all right, Splash. Oh my goodness, everybody stay. Okay, do we have a new new duckling? No, we do not, but it was worth a try. All right, so we're kind of going in weird circles, but we popped out over here, and this is actually the Tate and Tackle. The Tate and Tackle and the Tate and Tackle Pier. Uh, and we're gonna loop back. <laughs> What a tour. You know, of course, my zoo wouldn't just be straight lines. It would be wiggling places that would take you backwards and forwards and all around the place. And I absolutely love that about it. So we've already gotten lost on the first day of the tour. Kind of hilarious. Uh, and then this is Tate's fishing pier. We'll come back to that in just a second. Phew. I'm going to guide you guys back around. <laughs> oh my gosh, the Wellnut Center. And then it loops back around. And here we are, right where we began before we wandered down that little mystery path and uh, somehow managed to take a pretty sharp detour. All right, Lily, let's go ahead and like have you nibble some food and I'm gonna nibble some food. And I have to say, I forgot, I really did forget that my zoo is so wibbly wobbly, turny wurny on the directions and that I'm terrible with actually putting down signs. So I probably, <laughs> let's begin a new section on the Lost Quist, the Lost Quist? The Quist. I'm, I've been calling it the Quist for quite a while now. And let us remember my friends that we are going to follow the to-do list that was left for me inside of my home. I should have gone and seen that before we began the tour, but that's okay. For now, we are going to come up here and we are just going to put ideas of um, ideas of excitement, or let's just put like ideas for fun. There we go. And for this area, let's see, map, uh, map kiosk, 
And we also want a zoo pack kiosk. Oh, maybe we could put in like some fun little items so that people could have sort of like a zoo starter pack for their day here. Uh, and already with all of the rain, I'm kind of seeing that we might need to have like a few cabins and inns and things like that. But I also just need to put down uh, proper signs. That's, that's also something that we need for our zoo. So this will be fun. We'll have such a huge list of ideas by the time that we are done. Series house and see, that's not a proper sign. We need like proper sign. But we'll have such a huge list of things by the time we're done with the tour that I'll have plenty to keep us busy with. Ah, and then this is Everlasting Love, planted by Charlie in honor of one of his best friends in the world. And I love this. I've got to make it so you guys can have trees again. Ah, but all right, let's take just a second. I'm gonna nibble some of my raspberry pie. And if I need raspberry pie and I still can actually see where the entrance of the zoo is, we need to make sure that people have more food resources here for sure. All right, come along, Lily. And then this direction will actually take us over to the dinosaur zone, but let's look at the Wellnut Center and kind of wrap up there today. Because the Tate and Tackle is so cool. I love showing that place off so much. I mean, look at this. This is supposed to be my sign. Ugh. We need like cool custom devincing signs. That's what we need, not whatever this is. All right, well, right over here, <clears throat> is the Wellnut Center office and squirrel adoption area. So this is a very special place because we discovered that there were quite a few squirrels that were in need of help in our world. And so we came together to create the Wellnut Center, where those squirrels who have been injured through falling out of trees or possibly having a, a storm knock down their home or something like, like, like some sort of predator had gotten them but they had gotten away and they needed a little bit of time to heal this is where those squirrels and other small animals of the forest were brought the wellnut center is soon going to expand beyond squirrels and shall begin to incorporate things like robins and you know maybe a few of the ducks and maybe some of the rabbits and other small animals but um mostly it handles squirrels and that is why it is built like a beautiful forest and it has beautiful nuts hanging down from the ceiling. So you can see we've got some walnuts, we've got pecans, we have got these beautiful acorns that have light inside of them that uh, Eros actually gave us so that we could celebrate the walnut center. And this is for squirrel rehabilitation, but soon it will be just for small wildlife rehabilitation. And we will have you guys help us figure out which squirrels and which other animals, like do we have a little squirrel right over here? You are so cute little one. And this is actually from Grove number two. And then when you come, if you wanna adopt a squirrel, these are the things that you need to collect. Uh, and I think it'd be really fun to say if the Builders of Light wanna be able to collect all of these things and adopt the squirrel, they can totally work on it. Ah, oh, this is so much fun. I, I really like this spot. We need to see if there's some of the other animals that the other zookeepers have that need adopted as well. Some of the squirrels have actually, oh honey, you're still here, yeah. Some of the squirrels have actually no longer been in need of our services, and some of them are kind of mysteries. I know you're up there, little one, but you can see we've got like a fun little play area for them, and we made it so that they can climb all over uh, their, their nice, their nice, what are, what are I gonna call these, logs? Like skinny logs, branches, Lily. That's what skinny logs are called, branches. <laughs> But I really do like this spot and I think it'd be really fun once we started building up maybe a home in the forest or that red wolf sanctuary and park that we were working on to be able to come here and find the stories of the small animals that need our help. And now that there are more people in the world, other zoo crafters and the builders of light, maybe they'll stumble on wildlife that needs help and bring them to the Wellnut Center. Ah. And if you want to adopt those animals, you come on over and you check inside and then each spot will actually have some data about the different animals and anything that you might need to care for them. And if you have decided that you want to go ahead and adopt them, you swap out the wool so that it'll say like, oh, if you have green wool right over here, it should say, all right, one second, Lily. Helping a squirrel, just squirrel. 
Welcome to the Wellnut Center. And it will explain about the groves that the squirrels are sorted into. And I should just put a sign that says, and all other wildlife. And you can admire them. You can volunteer to take care of them. You can do tasks that have zookeeper experience for them. Gosh, I forgot how in depth we made this. If only we did this for everything in our zoo. This is so much fun. Each squirrely patient, Lily, don't distract the specialist. Each squirrely patient has a chest with data on them in this grove, a private grove in which they stay within the wellness center itself and a clipboard in the front of their grove. If you're interested in helping one of the squirrels heal and find a new home, check the chest inside this office. Each chest has a book of patient data and a piece of wool. If the wool is white, no one is currently attempting to heal the squirrel and it is available for anyone to start helping. If the wool is green, then some Someone is currently trying to heal that squirrel and is unavailable. So that tells you like which squirrels you can start working with. Like right now, Grove number two has somebody trying to work for it and Grove number one has somebody trying to work for it. And uh, Grove number four and Grove number three do not. So that's how you can kind of sort it out. I really love it. What does this one say? Now what? Now what? Now what? Oh, that's so cool. And then you can... <laughs> You can talk about like how you can take care of your squirrel and the kind of fun you can have with your squirrel. Good grief, it's been so long. I don't even remember this and I made this. And you can leave injured squirrels in here so that we can add them to the different groves. Jeez Louise, I forgot about that. And I really love how the, the Wellness Center offices are created to look like a giant acorn. Really fantastic. And that's not all. We actually also have a specialist right over here named Cassidy. And Cassidy has a whole bunch of squirrel specialty medicines that she needs help with making. So you can leave supplies right over here to help with the Wellnut Center, including a bunch of seeds, nuts, honey, uh, wax. You can also give her a whole bunch. Of, you can bring her empty syringes, fruit, things so she can build up the squirrel's enclosures. It's so much fun. That awful forest fire has resulted in a lot more patience. I hope I have enough aloe vera. And I just, ah, I love this. This is what Zudesia was supposed to be about. And we also have a pecan tree planted by Sierra for Dorothy right over here. And Smokey is Cassidy's bunny. And Cassidy also has a cat wandering around somewhere over here. But I think it has skedaddled because Lily has appeared. <laughs> But this is where I like to come to pick a bunch of walnuts to make delicious walnut pie, which sounds fantastic. But gosh, guys, this is awesome. I thought we would be blasting through with the tour, but being able to go through and see all of the little details and love that we have poured into this world, man, this, this really means a lot to me. I like this. So all right, we will carry on with the tour and we will see more of those little details that I completely forgot about over the years and start dreaming up more that we can add into the zoo next time. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.